Hey there, are you a big fan of Tailwind CSS and Next.js? Do you want to learn how combining the two can make building great looking applications super simple? If so, you've come to the right place because that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. Let's get to it. All right, let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with Next.js, it is a React-based framework for building modern applications. Next.js provides all sorts of additional functionality to React, such as server-side rendering, static site generation, and a whole lot of other features that developers will find invaluable. Tailwind CSS, on the other hand, is a utility-first CSS framework for building custom designs. So rather than giving you a bunch of components, it gives you utility classes that allow you to create your own components and scale them and build them out and customize them. And what I wanna do in this video is show you how you can integrate Tailwind CSS into your Next.js application to have a really good framework for building powerful designs. So to get started, I'm gonna open up my Visual Studio code and we're gonna start off by creating a brand new Next.js application. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use NPX. So we'll call NPX create next app and we'll give it the name of good UI. Now remember you can name it anything you want, but I just chose good UI for our app name. And this is gonna take a couple of seconds to download and install our dependencies. So I will see you in just a second. Excellent, so it looks like our application was successfully installed. Let's uh, navigate into it. So I'm gonna clear the console and go into our good UI directory. And let's start our server and make sure that it runs. So to do this, we're gonna execute npm run dev. And our server has started on localhost 3000. Let's navigate to it and make sure that it is working. So we'll go to localhost 3000 and we see the welcome to Next.js default message. Next, we're gonna go back into our code editor and add Tailwind CSS. So in my code editor, let's stop the server here and let's actually open the folder so that we can navigate through our directory and make sure that we're doing everything correctly. So what I'm gonna do is open up the good UI folder that we just created. And where do we put that? All right, so we are in our good UI directory. The next thing we're gonna do is install Tailwind CSS as a dependency for our project. So let's go ahead and open the console and we'll run npm install Tailwind CSS. And again, this is also gonna take a couple of seconds to install, but once it's installed, we'll be able to go to the next step. With Tailwind CSS installed, the next step we're gonna take is pretty much the same step we would do if we were installing Tailwind in any other application, and that is to create a CSS file which is going to import our Tailwind um, dependencies and utilities. So let's go ahead and navigate to our styles directory, and in here we're gonna create a new file called index.css. So I'll say touch index.css and that's gonna be created. So within this index.css, we are gonna import our Tailwind utilities. And those are Tailwind base, so to get the base information, Tailwind components, because Tailwind does uh, provide a series of different components that we can use. And I think I spelled components wrong. And then finally, Tailwind utilities. So far, so good. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a Tailwind config file, which is gonna allow us to configure our specific instance of Tailwind CSS. So let's go back to the root directory. We'll go up one, one directory, clear this, and let's create that Tailwind config file. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna run npx tailwind init. And as you can see, what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a tailwind.config.js file at our root application level, and it's going to give us a number of different variables, variants, plugins that we can now configure to enhance our Tailwind installation. And the final thing we're gonna need to do is create a postcss.config file, which is going to allow us to tell Next.js that we wanna process this Tailwind configuration file, bring in our Tailwind library, and use that rather than the built-in Next.js uh, postcss configuration. 
So to do this, we're going to simply create a new file. We'll call it postcss.config.js. And in here, what we're gonna do is simply export. So we'll say module.exports plugins. And the only PostCSS plugin that we're gonna use for the time being is going to be Tailwind CSS. Now you can add additional plugins here, additional transformations and additional changes you would want in your post CSS configuration. But for our example, just to keep it really simple, we're just importing Tailwind CSS. Now, one important thing to note about using a custom post CSS.config file in your Next.js application is that this is going to override the default post CSS configuration that Next.js provides. So the existence of post CSS.config in our directory here means that Next.js isn't gonna use its own anymore. So by default, Next.js provides its own post CSS configuration file. And if you add your own, this one takes precedence. So all of the defaults like auto prefixer and a couple of others that Next.js provides by default would not be included. And you would have to call them out specifically here. But in our example, we're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna call Tailwind CSS. And the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our pages directory into this underscore app, which is our main component. And we're gonna import that Tailwind CSS uh, file that, that we created that's gonna have our Tailwind CSS styles. So we're gonna say import styles and we called it index.css. And then we can remove this globals.css, which comes by default in, um, in the Next.js starter. Now let's start up our application and see if this was successful. So I'm going to clear the console and run npm run dev. And it looks like we are good to go. Our server has started on localhost 3000. So let's navigate there and see if our user experience has changed. Now it doesn't look like it has changed all that much. And the reason for this is because we're not using any Tailwind CSS utilities. So I think the font might have changed a little bit because um, Tailwind CSS overrode the, the default font, but we can verify that Tailwind CSS did load by looking at our sources and seeing this index.css file and seeing that it was loaded. Um, and it starts with the normalize.css. And if we scroll down, we'll see all of the Tailwind CSS utilities, such as, you know, text orange 400 for setting your text color to orange and there should be around 68, 69,000 lines of Tailwind, Tailwind UI and Tailwind CSS classes. So we can, we can see that we have successfully loaded um, Tailwind CSS into our application, but let's also confirm that this works by bringing in a Tailwind CSS component into our application and rendering it. Now to do this, I'm going to go to the Tailwind CSS website and go into their component section. And here they have a couple of examples. So you shouldn't necessarily use these by default, but this is just a team's way of showing you what is possible with Tailwind CSS. The Tailwind team also has a product called Tailwind UI, which gives you beautiful UI components that are created by the team using Tailwind CSS. And if you're interested, you could check that out at tailwindui.com and they have all sorts of different components that you can just drag and drop and use in your applications. But getting back into our video, let's go ahead and take a look at the cards example and we'll just take this stacked card and copy the code for it and paste it in our Next.js application. So I'm just gonna copy all of this, go into Visual Studio Code, let's go into our uh, index file here and let's remove the default Next.js content so this footer and this main area. And what we'll do is we'll just paste um, that component that was given to us by Tailwind CSS. Uh, we'll have to fix this guy. And now if we go into our application, into our code, we'll see that that card has rendered. So we can see the shadow on it. We can see um, the, this pill UI. And then this sunset in the mountains is not rendering because it's looking at a local resource or it's searching for a local resource called card top. But we can fix this by going to Unsplash, for example, and picking up a random image. So let's just go and we'll take this image, copy its address and replace it. 
So now if we go back into our application, we'll see that we have uh, this card loaded and it's using the Tailwind UI elements that we imported. Now let's go ahead and make a couple of changes. So if we go into our code and you know here we're using padding X of six, if we were to change this to padding X of, um, I don't know, let's say 32 for example, and go back into our code, we would see that our paragraph and our content here has a lot less um, or a lot more white space and a lot less content per line. So we can see that our Tailwind CSS classes are loaded. And now any class that we wanted to use from the Tailwind docs, we can very easily uh, look it up. You know, what, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to do, um, you know, implement Flexbox? Are we trying to add spacing, margin? Uh, are we trying to edit our images? Anything that is in the docs here, we can very easily change. And just to show you another example, let's say we wanted to change the font weight. So there's all of these different styles for the font in Tailwind CSS. And let's say we wanted to change the paragraph here to have the font of extra bold. So we could just copy it and paste it here. So we have text base. Let's change that to font extra bold, save it go back into our application and we'll see that our paragraph has extra bold content. Now, the last thing I wanna show before we close out this video is how Tailwind CSS can allow us to purge uh, all of those unused styles. So if we take a look at that uh, sources tab again and this index.css file, we see that it is a very, very big, big file. There is well over 69,000 lines of code here and we are very likely not gonna be using all of it. You know, if we are in development mode, it may not matter as much, but definitely when you put your app in production, you wanna load as few resources as possible to render your UI. And as of version 1.4, Tailwind CSS has purging functionality built in. And to show you how this works, let's go into our Visual Studio code and let's open that tailwind.config.js file that we created earlier and look at this first purge element. This is where we can tell Tailwind CSS where to find our HTML files and to only render and to only include the classes, the utility classes that we are actually using in our application and discard all of the other ones. And the way that we're gonna do this is within this purge array here, we're actually gonna change it to an object. And the first thing, we're, the first property we're gonna pass to this object is gonna be called enabled and we'll set that to true. And then the second property is gonna be content, which is gonna be an array of files that we wanna look for. So let me add that comma here. And for our content here, what we care about is all of our pages. So we can very easily tell Tailwind CSS to take a look at all of our pages and extract just the classes that are used in our pages and discard all of them. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're just gonna pass in a string that looks at our pages directory and then looks inside of it, looks inside of that directory and gets all of the documents that end in JavaScript. Now what this is gonna do is every time our application is built, only the styles that we have used in our application are gonna be rendered and the ones that are not used are gonna be discarded and won't be loaded into our application. So to see how this works, I'm going to restart the server. So let's stop it here, clear and then run npm run dev. And again, our server has started, localhost 3000. Let's go into our application, let's refresh, and we still see our Tailwind UI loaded just how we expected it. We have that card, we have the, the cold, coldest sunset, and everything looks great. But now if we take a look at our sources element and this index.css file, Rather than it being, you know, 70, 69,000 plus lines of code, it is only 868 lines of code. And it only includes the classes that we are using in our application. And I think this is just one of the coolest features of Tailwind CSS. And I think that about wraps this video up. Um, in this video, I showed you how to create a new Next.js application and add Tailwind CSS to it. We took a look at the Tailwind configuration file and showed you how you can enable purging on it. And then we also took a look at creating a custom post CSS configuration file 
And the key thing to remember here is if you are building a Next.js application that has its own post CSS config file, that is going to overwrite an existing post CSS configuration file that Next.js provides by default. But that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.